Hey, my name is Esper and welcome to my YouTube channel. I make studio vlogs, paint with me videos, and a little bit of tips and tricks here and there. And I do unboxings for my stationery that I buy a lot of because I have an addiction. We're not talking about it. <laughs> I also make and sell stickers and I have more things coming to my shop soon. However, you are here for some advice and I'm here to give it to you. So let's get started. When do you upgrade your equipment? When do you upgrade your art supplies? This can apply to any and all facets of your life. Whether you're doing woodworking, watercolor painting, anything else, it could also apply to your life. So the main advice that I want to give you here is if you are 100% sure that you are going to get your money's worth out of the thing that you will be buying, then get the best thing or the best thing that you can afford at that time. However, if you are even 99.99999% sure and not 100, then I need you to follow this rule, which is buy cheaper and once you break it or if you've grown out of this, then you upgrade your equipment. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of variations of this rule already, but I genuinely do stand by it. And I will talk more about why this is, but I want to tell you a little story first. So I actually got started creating content on the internet by streaming on Twitch. And at that point, I was streaming with my headset microphone and I had virtually no good equipment and I treaded the waters first and tried out whether I liked streaming or not. And I quickly realized that I was going to like streaming a lot and I was going to keep doing it. And I took a leap of faith in myself, knowing that I was 100% sure that I was going to get my money's worth out of the equipment I'm going to buy. I dove headfirst in and bought myself a mic. The mic that I am actually still using right now. I believe I bought this mic in 2014, maybe 2015, and it's been with me for that long. I spent a total of probably about 300 something dollars, which is not a lot if you look at all of the mics that are out there. For this mic, the boom arm and the shock mount. So the moral of the story that I'm trying to say here is that there are few hundred percents in your life. However, if you're sure, you're sure, and it pays off not to take that intermediate step. However, I will now tell you the anecdote about my watercolor supplies. I did not know if I was going to pursue watercolor because I had done art for a long time and I didn't view myself really as a great artist. And I didn't know if I then wanted to invest in myself in that regard. You know, cash was also tight at that point and 
I didn't want to invest in something that I wasn't entirely sure of. So what I did was find the best deal on the most okay quality watercolor that I could find. So I ended up with a student grade palette that was $12 because I hunted down a deal to get a few dollars off and I got my watercolors and I really truly enjoyed the medium. And there were downsides to using cheaper watercolors, cheaper paper, and having those drawbacks. However, that set lasted me a year and a half. And it was only now that I can one, afford it, and two, I've been taking on bigger projects that I actually upgraded to a set of professional grade watercolors and paper and I actually only recently got myself brushes. So the advice that I'm trying to give here is this. You have to evaluate within yourself three things. How sure am I that I want to do this exact thing that I am doing right now? And how is the longevity of this project that I am currently trying to accomplish? That's the first thing. Do you think that you could see yourself doing this for a long time and you have to really be honest with yourself in this process because lying to yourself just makes you and your bank account unhappy it's okay for you not to be fully invested in something i wasn't fully invested in watercolors for a long time and that's okay you have to try things to get to know if you like them and you have to be honest with yourself ultimately because the more honest you are with yourself the easier it becomes for you to evaluate your needs the second thing that i want to have you evaluate is your budget budget is super important it is far more important than what you want to create, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Because if you don't have this in your budget and you are putting financial strain on yourself to do something, the results aren't going to be desirable because you don't want an extra stress added on to your hobby. And I am talking about this as if this is a hobby because I don't want to give business advice. This is something that would not apply in a business sense. If you are running a business, you're looking at this from a financial standpoint. But I am communicating this in a hobby standpoint for fun. If you are stretching your budget to buy something that you want, then it's not worth it. Whether you have to save up for it a little bit more or you have to just get something a little bit cheaper, that is what you need to evaluate. The thing is, is that you can have great results with cheaper products just fine and I think that showing yourself that commitment is a good thing you know it validates the purchase in your mind a little bit more and you get to have this proof for yourself that this is something that I will spend money on that will be worth it 
So keep that in mind. Your budget is a really important part of buying best or buying, you know, something that's good enough but might not be the best. I think that, and I'm going off on a little tangent here, and I'm sorry, I will get back on task, that sometimes quality gets equated with how much money we spend on a hobby or a project. And that's not true because you could be looking to achieve different things with what you're doing. When I was starting out doing watercolor, I was looking to learn. I was looking to have fun and I was looking for a way to express myself. At that point, all of the art that I was doing that I was selling was digital. And I needed a me outlet that was tactile and I could just sit down and enjoy and that was watercolor. So this actually brings me to my third point, which I didn't plan, but I guess my mind was, you know, turning in that way is that what do you want this for? I want you when you make your decision to evaluate this. It's very important and I think that it kind of gets lost a little bit in, you know, this kind of capitalistic sense of like, you know, spend your money to get better results when, you know, sometimes it's not results that you want and that's a strange thing to say i know but like i was saying in my story sometimes what you want is to learn and learning sometimes involves just using cheaper materials so that when you get to the more expensive gear and the more expensive materials you know what your exact piece is going to be and you don't waste any of your more expensive paper, wood, whatever else. This also goes for photography, you know, like there is very expensive photo paper out there. So, you know, you want to print off a couple of your photographs, probably on cheaper paper first, you know, see how you like your composition be honest with yourself about what you're buying this for the reason why to tie this back to the story i had in the beginning the reason why i bought this mic that i'm speaking into right now is that i 100 percent knew i wanted to do some sort of content creation probably for the rest of my life and if not for a very long time and i've already accomplished that i have been creating content on the internet for quite a long time i had have had this microphone for so long and i bought quality because i knew that that's what i wanted and that I was going to get my money's worth out of it and it was within my budget. So you really have to make these three principles work for you in the decisions that you make. With watercolors, I wanted to learn, I wanted to practice, and I wasn't sure if I was going to do it full-time or to a certain amount of professionality or even pursue anything more than just sitting in my bedroom and you know splashing paint on some paper but it's grown from there and I've since upgraded my set if you haven't already watched I have a couple of videos on my watercolor set and I let you know what I think so this is really um, an involved process 
to get to know what you need and I hope that I was able to give you the guidelines for this. So just to recap and just so you don't have to scroll back in the video, the first thing is budget. Sorry, that is not the first thing. The first thing is whether you want to do this 100% or not. Anything less than 100%, you find a happy medium as to what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. The second thing is I need you to evaluate your budget and be honest about what your budget is, you know? It's okay not to have the biggest budget for your projects. And the third thing is what you want to accomplish because it's more important to buy for the thing that you want to accomplish rather than buying the most expensive thing that's just going to waste money. So I hope that this was helpful to you. And if it was, please share it with somebody else who you know, could use the advice and uh, give this video a like. If you have any comments or questions, pop them down in the comments below and um, subscribe for more content like this. I will see you in the next video and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.